Roush released a video on Tuesday teasing their third driver for the Daytona 500. So who is it? On Monday, Roush Fenway Kozlowski Racing put out a teaser on the Roush Team 60 Twitter account, which had been dormant for four years, teasing something called Stage 60. We can go ahead and assume based on what they posted Tuesday that it's not a return for their Xfinity program, which is a bit of a bummer, but it does indicate that it will be a third entry into the Daytona 500 under what they're calling Stage 60, presumably. It's going to be somewhat like the Project 91 program with Trackhouse and on the Chevy side. We'll have to wait and see what the whole extent of this program is. I have heard that it might just be a one-off for this race. The question is, who is the driver that's walking towards the camera in this teaser video? Obviously, you can see a silhouette of a driver walking towards the camera here, and if we stop it, you can see the outline of their head, and you can take a decent guess on who it is. A lot of fans online have speculated that it's AJ Allmendinger, and honestly, that doesn't make any sense at all because AJ has such close ties to colleague, he's not about to just bail out on them and go on and do a one-off for RFK. There's no connection there. There's no tie between he and the Ford cam, no tie between he and Brad or Roush or anybody else involved, so I'm going to go ahead and toss AJ Allmendinger out. Can also go ahead and just assume that it's not Carl Edwards because the head and what the silhouette has, they don't match up. Carl has an ear that sticks out pretty far. This silhouette of this driver does not have the same ear that is going to be all, not Dumbo-esque, but a little wonky like Kurt Busch before he got his ears pinned back. If you didn't know that, you learned something today. Kind of like Matt Kenseth getting hair transplant and Jeff Gordon also maybe doing a little bit of the same. But... It's a story for a different day. Jimmy Spencer, if you don't believe me, look up Jimmy Spencer in 1990 and then look up Jimmy Spencer in like 2007. Completely different guy. All right, we got sidetracked there. But we can tell that this person, the silhouette of this driver, definitely has uh, some hair, right? You can see it in the silhouette here. So we know it's not going to be Carl Edwards. Carl does have hair, but the ears don't match up. And we do a lot of ear examining here. We know it's not AJ Allmendinger. Some people have also speculated that it's Elio Castroneves because obviously when he won an SRX race, Don Hawk said that if you want a race, I'll get you into the Daytona 500. And they came close to doing that last year with the money team. And then Elio smartly decided not to take that ride and gave it to Connor Daly, who was proceeded to ride a bucking Bronco around the track because that car was all sorts of out of whack. Well, they'll be lucky if they even show up in 2024. However, I don't think this is Elio Castroneves. The hair doesn't match up, the body doesn't really match up, and if it was Elio, he would not have a boot cut suit on. He would instead have the cuffed suit because that's what all open wheel guys do. I don't think it's Elio Castroneves, so we can go ahead and toss him off to the side. It's also not Trevor Bain. The person walking towards the camera doesn't have the same body as Trevor Bain. The hair doesn't match up. The face doesn't match up. It's not Trevor Bain, so we're going to go ahead and put him off to the side as well. But would the driver from Unadilla, Georgia come on down? Because I am very sure that this is David Reagan. And Roush Fennick Racing is going to give David Reagan a one-off in the Daytona 500. The same race that he should have won in 2011 had he have not changed lanes before they got to the start-finish line so he could get down in front of... Trevor Bain. Granted, we actually don't know if he would have won the race, but he would have had a lot better chance of getting black flagged and sent to the back. He did redeem himself in the summer Daytona race, but that's not a Daytona 500. Obviously, he's been out of racing for a few years, and he's done some one-off races with Front Row Motorsports as well, a team that he also took to victory lane at Talladega, which was a pretty cool story at the time. David Reagan, though, is not exactly the <laughs> exciting announcement I think anybody would want. He's a two-time NASCAR Cup Series winner. He's been doing stuff for Fox on Race Hub, and he's actually really good at the TV side of things. I'm just not sure that David Reagan moves the needle for many fans, right? The whole point of doing these one-offs is trying to bring somebody in or bring somebody out of retirement where you're like, oh, that's really cool. Their fans are going to really appreciate that. And I'm sure David's dad is going to appreciate this a lot, but it's just not the same needle mover as trying to put, I don't know, even Elio into the car or Carl Edwards. Putting Carl Edwards in the car would make a ton of sense, but Brad Keselowski and Carl Edwards probably aren't going to do business together, and Brad or Carl going back to Roush, that's likely never going to happen. Let's be completely honest here. David Reagan, though, David just seems like a nice guy. He's going to be friends with everybody, and getting him into that car honestly isn't the worst idea. Sure, it doesn't move the needle from a, like, oh, I'm really excited to see that guy in this race, but it does really help out RFK. They go from being a two-car operation to a three-car operation and adding in a third guy who is very good in the draft, like extremely good at super speedway racing. 
And if you're Braddon and if you're Chris Buescher, you have to feel pretty comfortable with that. You know you're getting a guy that can push, can lead, can make moves, and he's going to be a loyal teammate. Sure, he's there to win, but he's going to do what Brad did at the Summer Daytona race this year and push the team car to victory if that's what it calls for. So he's a pretty safe pick. Is he, you know... To quote Colleg Racing, a shock the world signing? Absolutely not. He's not Shane Van Gisbergen. He's not Kimi Raikkonen. He's not Jensen Button. He's not even Mike Rockenfeller in terms of like, oh, that's pretty interesting. I'm excited to see how they do. But he is a guy that is formidable, can get things done. And at the end of the day, he has a really good opportunity to run competitive in this race, but also help out that team, which as I think is what they're really looking for here. Uh, he's not Travis Pastrana, and Travis Pastrana's a wild card. Did finish 11th in the 500 this past year, but at the end of the day, you're like, oh, this guy's a bit of a liability here. Yeah, so David Reagan, that's who I'm saying that this is. We'll find out tomorrow on the 29th. They're going to announce this on Wednesday, their Stage 60 program. Honestly, I would love it if it's more than just the Daytona 500, if they're willing to do more races and bring in other drivers from other disciplines the same way that Project 91 has done that uh, with Trackhouse. We'd love to see that. Obviously, we all like more crossovers, but let me know in the comments, who do you think it is? Do you think it's David Reagan? Do you think it's Trevor Bain? Do you, some, for some reason, think it's Carl Edwards? I don't know who you think it is. Let me know. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.